Hi, this is Mike at BookUp.com, and this short video is to show my friends in Embarcadero what I do for a living. Uh, my flagship product is called Chess Openings Wizard, and it's based on code that came from the original Turbo Pascal and later Turbo Pascal for Macintosh. For a while, we abandoned the Macintosh, but FireMonkey made it possible, yay, for us to write one piece of code that gets deployed on Windows and Macintosh, and most of the code goes to iOS and Android. So this solves basic problems for serious tournament players. Let's say I'm going to create a new ebook, and most people use this to to study their chess openings. So let's say, for instance, David I wants to create a record of his white repertoire, his white plans. So we create a new ebook, and it has nothing in it. Let's stretch it out so you can see more of what's going on here. Uh, there we go. Okay. And, uh, and by the way, hats off to Eli M from FFX Express that uh, he showed me in his arcade game set of a better way of doing sprites, which made my animation so much faster, especially in Macintosh with Fire Monkey. So, um, say David decides to play e4 like Bobby Fischer, he needs to be prepared for e6, the French. And he knows to play d4, and then if you play d5 here, he's going to play knight c3 and allow the win hour. So we can make comments here like, uh, uh, win hour is the best idea or something best for black in this case. And to start the win hour variation of the French is to play the bishop there. Um, so that's solving the problem of where do I put my opening preparation, my plans. This is what I plan to do. It also solves another insidious problem with studying chess openings, and that is transpositions. Say David decides, ah, instead I'm going to play queen pawn openings, which are completely different than king pawn openings. And he decides to play the knight out here, and say black plays here, if he plays the pawn up here, he's matching that position we saw earlier. And even though it's a completely different move order, this is searching possibly millions or billions of chess positions in every single square to see if there's a match. And it finds a match, and it finds the matching comment for this position, and it finds the matching move. Now we have the the, the problem of like, how does this compare to like what grandmasters play? So we have a database running in the background, what we call the pedigree database, which is made up of bunches of moves that imported from PGN games that look like this. Just tons and tons of text. There are millions and millions of these games available out on the internet. And what that allows us to do is to go and get just the games where what we call super grandmasters, the best grandmasters in the world, maybe the top 20, are playing against other super grandmasters. And only those games and only those moves from those games come in. And that's what we call our pedigree database. So we can go to the commands menu and say, add pedigree moves, or just press control P. And it brings in all the moves played by super GMs against other super GMs. So I can see that if uh, after uh, bishop b4, white's still got a slight advantage. He's going to win slightly more games than black, and there are quite a few draws available. And a6, which is you know, hardly ever played, uh, but white knew what he was doing and won most of the games, and there were no draws, because if you play a move that outlandish, it's probably going to end in a win for one side or the other. So... Those are the kinds of problems solved by the program. Let's say that that uh, we get into a position, or maybe a unique position beyond opening theory, and the chess player wants to know, well, okay, what's this position worth? That we can do with a chess engine. Let's say I go over here and say to Google and search for, I don't know, strong, strong chess engines. It's probably a good one. Yep, can't spell it. So one of the strongest chess engines out there is Stockfish. So the program uh, can take any one of these free downloadable, super strong engines. These are uh, what we call ELO ratings, which means this particular engine is stronger than any Grandmaster alive. So let's come back here and uh, where the program is running. And we can click on Start Engine. And an engine like Stockfish will start running. I actually have Stockfish uh, 18 here running. So I've already downloaded it, and it's showing me the uh, the best line and the second best line coming from the engine. And the engine will, of course, follow me around if I if I play different moves, and it will catch up with me and show its its recommendations there. Most of the code, let me close this guy down. Well, first I'll show you what a, like a finished ebook looks like, uh, one of our commercial ebooks. So this allows a chess coach to go in and put all kinds of information about a particular opening in. So then he can just pass this file to his students, or he may maybe sell this file as an ebook. So this particular ebook will teach how to play d4, d5, and it has comments about why you play the different moves that you do, the different ratings, and of course the pedigree database is showing the results of these things. And so these different lines, let's say we get out here and uh, why was this particular move played, comments. So that's what it looks like when chess coaches get a hold of this thing and pass their, their data around. Okay, let's take a look at the code. Most of the code is pretty mundane, and 
And like I, I've already th thanked EIM for the spray code. That really uh, made things so much easier. I was doing bit blitting before like I did on the original Macintosh code and it was so much slower in FireMonkey. But uh, the database uh, is built on uh, uh, FireDAC and we, we've had some speed issues. So we go back and forth between FireDAC and uh, DevArt's products to see which one's faster because importing these millions of games takes hours. So we'd like that to be a half an hour rather than two hours. So it's really important to us. Everything also is in SQLite. So FireDAC makes it possible for us to make one SQLite table, which is binary compatible, of course, between Windows, Macintosh, iOS, and Android. And that is probably the coolest part is I can work on my repertoire, my opening plans on a Windows or Macintosh machine, and then copy that file onto an iPad and study it while I'm on the train. Um, so the code, um, an importer, like this is going to import what we call PGN files. This this database format here, this text format, is known as Portable Game Notation or PGN. And so a lot of the work my program does it deals with the lingua franca of uh, of PGN and chess. So it imports. Okay, that's maybe not so much interesting code. Probably the database. I can show you what the database looks like. It looks like this. Um, so it's creating a table. 70 characters are enough to make a unique board and all the other information like uh, what the position is worth and how certain it is so back in that and if you notice in the window there's a little certainty bar like how sure you are that this position is winning or drawn or lost for white or black uh, opening codes that they can use or it will automatically display opening codes and all those comments that you're seeing are stored in just regular text and then there's code that I don't understand, which is kind of cool. So um, one of the most important things about Delphi is I can go out into a forum and say, look, I need a thread that's going to not block and it's going to not, it won't fail. And it's going to call a chess engine and get my stuff back via, via pipes. But I don't know what pipes are. And I don't know what the stuff is. So the coolest thing about Delphi is I can go out to a forum and say, give me a piece of code. And so my job is eminently cool because I use Delphi. And I probably mentioned I, I used Turbo Pascal, the very first like $49 product a million years ago because it was so wicked fast and wicked cool. And uh, this program has followed every iteration since. I'm still working with Delphi XC7 because that's where this project was done, but I'd be using Berlin. Uh, well, I will probably switch to Berlin as soon as this project is out. Um, the most recent version uh, actually got released to all 60,000 of our players just in the past week. So that's what I do for a living. <laughs>